Bibles and turn to Luke chapter 1. Luke chapter 1, Acts chapter 1. Luke chapter 1, Acts chapter 1. I used, um, well, I've preached from <coughs> Luke chapter 1 more than one time, uh, the first four verses, but I've used these two uh, together uh, a couple other times years ago. And um, we're going to focus in on a couple of people, and uh, one being Luke. He's the writer of the book of Luke, and he's the writer of the book of Acts. And the other being Theophilus. Theophilus is a man that is mentioned in the book of Luke, the first few verses. And, uh, and then also he's mentioned in the book of Acts, chapter number one. Now, when we talk about these two people here tonight, I want to say this, that Luke is only mentioned. And we know Luke very uh, he's kind of popular uh, because he uh, has his name as the title of one of the Gospels. And so we're very familiar with Luke. But yet Luke is only mentioned twice in the Bible. Uh, and so uh, him being mentioned in the Bible in Luke chapter 1, Luke chapter 1, Luke chapter Take your Bible and turn to Luke chapter 1 and Acts chapter 1. And... Um, when you uh, read there, you'll find that Theophilus is mentioned in both of these texts. Now, Luke is not mentioned. He don't mention, he don't mention himself in either one of these books that he's written. But he's mentioned by Paul in Colossians chapter 4 in verse 14. He's called the beloved physician. And then in 2 Timothy chapter 4, Paul says, only Luke is with me. And uh, the, it is said that maybe that during this time he wrote uh, uh, the, the, the book of Luke uh, when he was with Paul. And uh, that may be true. I'm not sure about all that. It's just uh, some person's uh, uh, thoughts about that. And, uh, but we do know that, it, that it, it's a little different. It's a little different in the book of the, the, one of the Gospels to be written to one person. Now, it's, it's to be shared with everybody, but it's addressed to one person. We read in Luke chapter 1, verse 1, it says, For as much as many have taken in hand to set forth in order a declaration of those things 
which are most surely believed among us. And so Luke starts off about making a declaration or telling um, this gentleman, here's what we believe. And in verse 2, he says, even as they delivered them unto us, which from the beginning were eyewitnesses and ministers of the word, it seemed good to me also, having had perfect understanding of all things from the very first, to write unto thee in order, most excellent Theophilus. Now, uh, and he says that thou mightest know the certainty of those things. Now, he, he, he's, he, 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 you just, uh, if you look at it this way, he's actually witnessing to this man through this letter or through this book. And I, I want to say that I don't know how uh, Luke came to know this man, but it's apparent that he, uh, he knows him because he's writing this to him. He's addressed it to him. Uh, he may know him very well. He may know. Uh, he may just uh, uh, knowing uh, know him in passing. But uh, when you look here, he says that thou mightest know the certainty of those things wherein thou hast been instructed. And so uh, it's not the first time that Luke apparently has talked to this man. So he's talked to this man probably personally and told him about Jesus. Now he writes an entire gospel to a man trying to win him to God, apparently. I don't know. I mean, it's, uh, it's said in most commentaries that at this particular time that Theophilus is probably not a born-again Christian. And that's why Paul, I mean, uh, not Paul, that's why Luke spends entire uh, the entirety of this whole book writing it to this one man. Now it's shared with us, thank God. Now, if you think about, if you read the book of Luke, Luke goes from beginning to the end of the life of Christ. And there's a, uh, there's a point in time in there uh, between uh, his birth and uh, when he gets 12 years old, you don't hear much about it. Uh, you don't write much about it. There's a point between the time between uh, uh, he's 12 years old and when he gets about 30 years old, uh, when the Lord uh, starts his ministry, you don't hear much about it. But the, the biggest things that we know or the most important things that we know or we believe, as, uh, as Luke says here, of those things which are most surely believed uh, in verse 1 among us, he says, he wants this man Theophilus to know. Now I'm going to say I'm trying to challenge you tonight that we need to take the time to do this to individuals in our life. I mean, if Luke seen the importance here of trying to win one man to God, amen, by writing an entire letter to him, we're not going to call it a letter again, but I mean, it's like a letter. It's, uh, we call it a book here. It's just something he wrote. And it don't, uh, you know, I want to say, listen, it takes quite a while to read all these chapters, and I think there's 24, if I'm not mistaken, of these chapters that, that, that are here. Now, of course, when... Uh, when Luke wrote it to him, it wasn't broken down in chapters, but there's 24 of them. And, and, it, and, it's, it, and it takes quite a while to read uh, the book of Luke. But he, he wanted this man to know for sure. Now, what does, what does the book of uh, Luke cover? Well, the book of Luke covers the life of Christ. It covers his birth. I mean, every Christmas I preach from the book of Luke. I mean, I, I preach from the book of Luke chapter 1, when the, when the angel visits Mary, and then I and and, and, he, and, and she says, "How could this be?" And, and, and she, said, she in other words, she said, "It's impossible. I ain't never been with a man." And he said, "All things are possible to God." And, and then he moves into chapter two, and and he gives us a, a very distinct uh, description of uh, of where uh, they are and where they're headed, and. And uh, she's pregnant. Uh, she's not pregnant. She's with child. And uh, she gives birth to our Lord Jesus Christ. And the angels come down to the shepherds. And the angels tell the shepherds, go. Uh, and you'll find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. They go down there. And they find it exactly like it was. Told them. And so you've got the birth of Christ. You've got the miracles of Christ that are listed in the book of Luke. And we could go. We got. We we don't really have time to go through. Uh, you know those. But 
if you was to look over there, you got the widow's son that's brought, uh, you know, uh, uh, that's brought back to life. And, um, and the, but you know, when you, when you look at all this, you, you see the miracles, you see his life, you see the, the, the mockery of a trial they gave him. Uh, and then uh, you see this crucifixion, you see the resurrection, and, uh, you know, you, uh, you, you see these things, you see. And, uh, and so uh, the most important things, he, he said the things that we most surely believe. And uh, I want you to notice here that, uh, you know, Luke's mentioned twice in the Bible, and so Theophilus is mentioned twice in the Bible. He's mentioned here in this text. And I want you to notice here in verse number three, it seemed good to me also having had perfect understanding of all things from the very first to write unto thee in order, most excellent Theophilus. Most excellent Theophilus. Now, you know, uh, I, it's not clear in most commentaries when you read or study about this because we only have him mentioned two times. Now, Josephus uh, has an idea about him. And then others, have, you know, Josephus, Josephus is the great historian that a lot of uh, commentators and a lot of uh, preachers and people that study the Bible, uh, they refer to. Uh, and, but he's either, he either has, uh, we know that he has a position, we'll say that, because he's called most excellent the author. Some said he might have been a king of some area. Uh, he, some said he might have been a priest. Uh, others said, uh, thought that he might uh, have a, a position uh, in the Roman government. I, I don't know, but we know that he had a position because he addresses him as most excellent Theophilus. I mean, this sounds like to me that he's on up there pretty good. You know, now uh, Paul had uh, had a desire uh, to go all the way to the top so he could witness to somebody. Now, you know, somebody's. You know, we've all made the excuse of why we can't talk to somebody, and the, the biggest excuse we don't talk to somebody is that we just don't feel like we're adequate to do the job. I want to tell you something. If you got Jesus Christ in your heart, amen, and you're living for God, amen. Don't go out here and, but, uh, no, you can't sit at the bar and win somebody to God. You can't sleep with your neighbor and roll over and say, you want to trust Jesus? I've told people that's living in sin before, I said, what are you going to do? You're going to have sex one night, next morning, tell them, say, you want, you want, you want to accept Jesus? As you, say. you can't win them to God while you're not living for God. Are you understanding me? I mean, that's common sense, ain't it? So you got to live right, amen. And, you gotta just, and so uh, what we need to do is we need to get it down. We need to, get, we need to get somebody on our mind to try to win to the Lord. And we can focus on that individual. Now, I'm going to be honest with you. I'm going to be honest with you. If you choose somebody in your family, more power to you. And you're going to need a lot of God when you start trying to win somebody in your family. Because people in your family know everything about you. And when you point something out to them that, that, that they need Jesus Christ as their Savior, they're going to say, well, what about that time uh, you smoked that weed? What about that time you smoked that uh, uh, cigarette? What about that time you drank that beer? What about that time I heard you say that bad word? What if, they're going to just come up with all that junk, you see. And so it's good, to, if you can, to find somebody to go Talk to your family members, amen, uh, about the Lord. I'm not saying not talk to them, but we need to get somebody on our heart like Luke did, Theophilus here. Now, with all that being said, this may, but I'm going to say, let me get back to it. Don't ever feel like you're inadequate to talk to somebody, maybe because they got some money, or maybe you work for them, or maybe they own a big company, got a, you know, you know, big business or something other. If God puts them on your heart, if you're standing in a line at Walmart and says the Lord, and the Lord puts on your heart to invite somebody to church, you better do it. I don't know how many times in my life did God put somebody on my heart to go witness to. Now, I don't know how many people in this is. It's not many. And I count on my hand maybe less than five that died, and I never went to them. You know what the Bible says about that, don't you? Look at these. Ezekiel says the blood's going to be on my hand. 
That's sad. Amen. That's why we need to focus. But anyway, we need to focus on somebody. I mean, God will help us. Amen. If we pray and ask the Lord, he'll put somebody on our heart to talk to. And I'll tell you this. If you be real sincere and, and, and um, just kind of ease your way into it, amen, you can talk to your family members. You can ask God and you pray about it big time. And you pray about anybody you go before you go talk to them. But you talk to them and say, Lord, would you soften their heart? Just, 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 just let them understand. And I'm not trying to tell, make them feel like I'm better than they are. God, would you soften their heart and the Holy Ghost work in their heart and just tell them that you love them and you're concerned about them and you want to see them saved. Amen. And God can do the first works before you ever get there. Amen. And he'll just use you as a tool to give them direction. Amen. Now, look over at Acts chapter 1. Acts chapter 1. Acts chapter 1, we're going to read one verse. The Bible said, the for, oh, we'll read three. The former treaties have I made, O Theophilus, of all that Jesus began both to do and to teach until the day in which he was taken up after that he, through the Holy Ghost, had given commandments unto the apostles whom he had chosen to whom also he showed himself alive after the passion by many infallible proofs, being seen of them forty days and speaking of those things pertaining to the kingdom of God. Now listen. It seems like things changed just a little bit. Now I'd be honest with you. I didn't see this on my own. I read behind somebody else that I saw this. And they probably had somebody else to you know, point it out to them. I don't know. It may have trickled on down. But I want to show you something. When you read over there, and we just read it a while ago, and we made uh, mention of it, in Luke chapter number 1, verse 3, he said, Most excellent Theophilus. You see that? You saw that, didn't you? You heard that. Here he says, Oh, Theophilus. Seems like that Luke has gotten to know him a little bit better because he seems like he's a little bit more comfortable around him. That makes sense. I mean, the way he addresses and approaches this man that apparently has a position. <laughs> or you could say this too. I don't know. I'm just kind of reading in between the lines and hoping and praying this really happened. That to begin with, when he writes to him, he's not saved. But now when he writes to him, he's his brother in Christ. It could be. I don't know. But God could work that out. Amen. I'm just saying. He says, most excellent Theophilus. He's like standing back saying it. And he's like, oh, Theophilus? So, no, I don't think he did that. But, you know, it's like he, he, he knows him, you know. And he's comfortable. You, you, you ever go out, you ever around, we're around family members sometimes and people we know work, uh, people we work with and People out in the community, we just, you, you got to kind of watch what you say and, you know, you, but then, you know, when you get around the brethren, I mean, you just can be yourself. You know what I'm saying? Amen. So I like that, don't you? When I come to church, I just, you know, it's not like, uh, you know, I, I let my guard down or nothing, but I, I just, I, I can be myself around here. You know, it's like, you know, you, you got, you, you, you seem like in the world when people get to know you. A lot of people look at the preacher like he, all he wants is your pocketbook or your wallet. Well, we do want it. God wants it, amen. Amen. But we'll get your heart first, amen. And when I say that, I am being honest to God because it's in the Bible. All that I preach is in the Bible. And so, uh, but it seems like that there's a change that's went on. I know there's a change in the way that Luke approaches him. So maybe there's a change in Theophilus. Now, he he focuses in on this one man. I'm going to preach about 12 more minutes. We've already said there's not much spoken about Luke, and Luke don't speak of himself. He's only mentioned twice. Theophilus is mentioned twice. And, um, you know, um, it's apparent that 
Luke is concerned about this man. And it's amazing that, it's amazing how Luke picks out this one man and writes both of these books to him. I don't know. God had to put this man on his heart. I mean, it, it, it's a possibility he's kin to him. I don't know. It's a possibility he was his neighbor. I don't know. I'm just kind of throwing some things out there. God put this man on Luke's heart. You know, when you think about uh, Luke had Theophilus on his heart, the Bible says in Psalms 37, 4, Delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. And I believe in Luke chapter 1, the desire of Luke's heart is that Theophilus come to know all these truths that are very important. And in Acts chapter 1, these first verse, it just looks like how he addressed him that he's come to know these things. Amen. Now, it's obvious by what we've already said that Luke had someone on his heart. And his name is Theophilus. We need to be like Luke and get someone on our heart. You know, Paul took a lot of people under his wing. Amen. He calls Timothy his son in the faith. He, matter of fact, later on, he said, uh, only Luke is with me. Now, he had demons before. He had others that was with him before, but they left and went their ways. Whatever way they went, way the world or uh, in a different ministry, a different uh, direction in the ministry. Paul, you know, uh, um, he, you know, he's, uh, one time when, when Paul uh, took... Uh, Barnabas, and then uh, then Paul and and Silas, you know, uh, and uh, it, just other ones that Paul worked with at times, and so uh, it's it's apparent that people in the Bible get people on their heart, and they are a help to them. Amen. I, you know, I, I've had I think we've had. Um, let's see now. One, two, three, and, and if I'm missing one in the 25 years, we have three people that's announced their call to preach under my ministry, and they're all gone. JT's in heaven, Dwayne's at another church, and uh, Luca, Lucas Mello is uh, over there at Love Valley, the member at Love Valley now. And, uh, you know, I, 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 I tried when these men were here to kind of be like a Paul. I probably wouldn't, I wouldn't know we're close to being as good as Paul. But, you know, when you think about somebody in the Bible that gets their heart or somebody gets their mind set on somebody, it's like this. You remember Andrew came to be a follower of Jesus in John chapter 1. And as soon as he met Jesus, you know who he went and got? He went and got his brother Peter. He said, we found the Messiah. Mm -hmm. You know, um, over at Acts chapter 8, Philip went over there. He got the Ethiopian eunuch. Now, I know the Lord. Now, the Lord was in this because the, the, uh, Philip was preaching a great revival and the Spirit of God was moving and the Spirit came to, uh, to him and he said, I want you to go out there in the desert. What, Lord? I, you know, that's just like some of my pastor friends over the years have just dropped their church and went to the mission field. And I'm thinking, what the world? You know. I, you know, I, I've always said, I'll just tell you like it is. Now, if God wants me to go to Africa or somewhere like that, he's going to have to knock me upside the head. I'm just telling you. I'm just not thinking like that right now. I, you know, and I might be out of the will of God to stay here in America, but I'm just saying, this is what Philip did. And so, when he saw that Ethiopian eunuch, as a black man, when he saw him, he got his heart. And let me tell you something about this. The Holy Spirit, like I said, they, God went ahead of him because this man was already reading in the Bible in Isaiah. When, when Philip walked up, he said, you understand what you read? He said, how can I understand it except somebody tell me? 
So Philip took the same scripture and preached Jesus to him. Ain't that something? And he won that man to the Lord. And 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 the, and, and you know, you go into the story there, and he, and he said, Here's water, what doth hinder me to be baptized? And he said, If thou believest, thou mayest. You know, in the NIV, that's verse number 37 in chapter 8 of Acts, it's left out of the old NIV. They went back to the new NIVs and they put it back in brackets now. Because people that believe that King James Bible made such a big deal out of it. So that's, you know, that's that's another reason saying, because it just makes people believe that you can get saved without, or you can go to heaven by being baptized. But verse number 37, he says, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. That was his profession. Everybody has to believe in Jesus Christ to be saved. Amen. Amen. And so uh, we find that Philip got the Ethiopian eunuch on his heart. Uh, Barnabas got, you know, Barnabas is the one that introduced Paul to the disciples. The disciples were scared of him, man. He's trying to set us up, buddy. He's, he's doing the inside job. He's going to get us all killed. They hiding from him. Y'all done seen them kind of movies? Where the guy goes you know, rogue or whatever you call it. Goes bad. Barnabas got Paul on his heart. He was a help to him. Aquila and Priscilla. They got Apollos on their heart over there in Acts chapter 18. He was a little mixed up about some things and they got him on the right path. You ever, you know, now let me just say, don't be a know-it-all when it comes to the Bible, okay? Pick your, pick your, uh, pick your, your, your times when you try to help. So don't try to correct everybody, but just kind of ease into it. And not like a know-it-all. We don't want to be like, y'all watch Andy Griffith say amen? You know, in the colored ones, uh, the ones where they had color, you know, when Gomer, uh, I mean, Goober, he, he grew the beard. Anybody see that episode? And all of a sudden, he was so wise, you know, and he was debonair, walking around, and, tell, and everybody couldn't stand to be around him because he was a know-it-all. Don't be like that. I don't think Aquila and Priscilla was that way. And then Paul got Timothy on his heart. <clears throat> Paul wrote two books to Timothy personally to him. Taught him how to behave himself in the house of God. 1 Timothy chapter 1 verse uh, chapter uh, 1 Timothy chapter 3 I should say. Verse 15. He said thou knowest how thou oughtest to behave. And, I, and so that tells us now when everybody listen. All you kids listen right now. Sit up listen. There is a certain way you need to behave in the house of God. And if your mama and your baby don't tell you, your preacher will. Amen. You hear me, Marla? She's sleeping. Lucky. I was going to put her tail. No, I'm just kidding. <clears throat> the work of God is, listen, I'm going to tell you something. I think I'll just finish this message next Wednesday night. But I want to tell you something about the work of God. You know, the work of God, you know, you, you can get things done in numbers. But I'll teach, teach you a little lesson next week, maybe next Wednesday night, about how the Lord, uh, he didn't necessarily have to have numbers to get the job done. There's a lot of individual work in the Bible, in the New Testament, in the Old Testament, where one person, one-on-one, -on -one, Help somebody out. Amen. Amen. Let's everyone stand. Appreciate you being in the house of the Lord tonight.